welcome back as we continue to celebrate Black History Month. Our next guest has made a name for himself after going viral on TikTok for his knowledge and really unique take on Chicago black history. Joining us now is Chicago's urban historian Sherman Dilla Thomas. Dilla, thanks for being here. Oh man, really honored. Thanks for having me. Happy you're here. You're repping Chicago all around here with the hat and the sweater. Yeah. I know that's what you talk about. So we know you from your TikTok videos, but now so much has happened since then. What are you up to? I'm up to a number of things. One, I'm still very happy to be still employed with uh, ComEd, but I also run Chicago Mahogany Tours. We take people on neighborhood tours where we teach them why everything dope about America comes from Chicago. And then me and Thomas Lennon, who's uh, one of the creators of Reno 911, we're working on the show together. So yeah, I'm pretty busy. Oh my goodness. I didn't know you work with ComEd too. So fun fact. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I know they're busy today with power outages. Oh, that's, that's why I'm shouting them out for the guys working hard to get the power back up. Yeah, we appreciate them so much. There's still lots of people without power, so we're glad that they can work for us. All right, you're the expert on Chicago, black history in specific. Let's talk about some really cool historic moments here, including black history starting here in the city. Yeah, absolutely. The concept of Black History Month starts right here in Chicago. It starts as Negro Achievement Week on 37th and Wabash at the Wabash YMCA. Dr. Carter G. Woodson and the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. Thought it'd be pretty cool if we studied everything cool and black uh, within one particular week in February. They picked that week in February because it had Frederick Douglass's birthday and Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Wow. Can we just pause for a second? I have to ask you, how do you learn about all of these things? I wish I knew if you asked me what I had on yesterday, I couldn't tell you, but <laughs> if it has anything to do with Chicago, I certainly remember it. I'm probably because my dad was a cop for 32 years here, and so watching him put on that uniform every day really incensed a, a sense of Chicago pride into me. That's amazing. So next, let's talk about the birth of gospel. I mean, Chicago's known for a lot of things, and this is one of them. Yeah, absolutely, and what's amazing is how the story unfolds uh, out of tragedy, really, the country gets gospel music as a musical genre. Uh, Thomas Dorsey sadly lost his wife and child during childbirth and uh, members of his church sent the newly arriving young lady to Chicago to sing to him and kind of cheer him up. She saw a poem that he wrote in, you know, uh, silence and in sadness to losing his wife and she sung the lyrics of that song. Uh, he played the piano. That song today is called Precious Lord and it was Mahalia Jackson who sung it to him and that moment in time created gospel music for this country. Oh, and I love it. I grew up in the black church and grew up on gospel music, so I'm so grateful for the roots here. Even if it came from something sad, it came, brought something beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's go to basketball and the Harlem Globetrotters. We we see them, we know this, but, we, but I didn't even know that they broke a lot of barriers historically here in the city. Yeah, absolutely. Well, a lot of people don't even know that the Harlem Globetrotters are from Chicago just because of the name Harlem. Well, Harlem was picked for a number of reasons, but they started out right here in Chicago. They were five women. Wendell Phillips High School graduates initially uh, referred to as the Savoy Big Five and they're really responsible for breaking the color barrier of the NBA because when the Minneapolis Lakers who are the NBA's first team uh, first championship team when they won the championship they challenged the Harlem Globetrotters here in Chicago the Harlem Globetrotters won and that very next year the NBA started drafting African Americans particularly from the Harlem Globetrotters team. Oh so pivotal in that man. Um, all right so Chicago Chicago's known for so many firsts. You just talked about some of them, but what are some others that really st stick out to you? Oh, we'll be here all day if you ask me <laughs> that, but both the first uh, Brigadier General in the Army and the first Brigadier General in the Air Force is from Chicago. Uh, Miss Edith Sampson is the first African-American woman to be elected judge from Chicago. She's also one of the first African-American women to be appointed to the UN. Uh, Chicago gives the world uh, amazing first from the first African-American in space, which is Robert Lawrence to the first African American woman in space, which is Mae Jemison. Uh, we'll be here all day. Barbara Sizemore is the first African American woman to lead a school district. She did that in Washington, D.C. We have the first black started ad agency, first black woman started ad agency. Like I said, we'll be here all day. Check, check, check. I love it. Okay, so what's the, your favorite part about what you do? I mean, you were like spreading all the knowledge around. I think my favorite part is people's reaction, uh, particularly 
certainly today when you Google Chicago or look up Chicago, there's certainly a negative connotation. And what I love is when people come off my tours or after watching my social media channels, they feel the sense of Chicago pride. I won't deny that we have our issues, but we're certainly a world-class city. In fact, Condé Nast said that we're the best big city six years running, right? So uh, I promote that and I think it's important. I love seeing perspective changes when uh, people watch my channels. Man, that's so cool to see that shift. I mean, the good with the bad, right? Absolutely. So we just get that mixture. Thanks for being with us and sharing, and thanks for sharing good stuff about Chicago. I'm honored. Thanks for having me. Yeah, our Chicago urban historian. That's we me. appreciate you being with us. Thanks so much. Oh, and I wanted to ask, how can people find out about your tours? Oh, you can go to chicagomahogany.com, chicagomahogany, all one word, dot com, or my social media platform, the number six, F-I-G-G-A underscore Dilla, six figure Dilla. All right, appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we see more of Dilla tonight. He'll join our Erica Sargent to talk about a major initiative to revitalize one of his favorite neighborhoods, Bronzeville. That's where I live. Excited to see this. That's at 10 on our air on CBS2, or you can stream it right here on CBS News Chicago.